Hey everyone, Tangus here. I wanted to create a new video for 2022 that um, might help show some new or existing users um, some of the functionality that's within the TradingView platform and you know how easy it is to um, very quickly identify stocks that you know might be in a potential uptrend. Um, something that you can then you know do further analysis around. You know, if you're a fundamental trader, you can go and look at all their metrics, and you know, if you're a um, technical trader, you can apply some of your own. Um, you know, charting tools, you know, whether you like Fibonacci, whether you like moving averages, whether you like linear regression, whether you like Bollinger Bands, you know, there's infinite number of ways to, you know, analyze stocks within the TradingView platform. Um, you know, perhaps not infinite, but there's certainly thousands, you know, and uh, there's a whole bunch of built-in things that you can use. But for now, what I'm going to do is just going to have a very simple example. All I've got on my screen here is a, a candlestick chart. You can change what sort of chart you're looking at just by clicking on this little drop down. So, you know, you might have a line chart, uh, you might have an area chart, um, but for this example, we'll use candlesticks. And so, see how I've got candles and line. And all I do is see how I've got that little uh, star and the star. So, if I untick that star, you'll see the line will disappear over here. So, wherever you are in trading view, it's a very quick and easy way just to, I guess, you know, add the things that you know your favorite sort of tools to the you know to the indicator um bar you know up here anyway so um i've got my uh candlestick chart and what i want to do is i'm just going to do something very simple i'm going to look for stocks that are breaking above their 20 day moving average so that's all i want i want to find stocks in a nice left to right uptrend um where they might have had a pullback but they're breaking back up above their 20 day moving average showing the momentum's coming back into that stock some people use seven days, some people use 11 days, some people use, you know, 50 days. It doesn't matter what you use. Um, it's just to give you an idea of, you know, being able to create a short list of stocks. And so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to click um, on this little drop down here and I'm going to go create a new list. And I'm going to say, let's call it um, stocks breaking, breaking 20 day moving average. We're going to go save. And so that's how you create a watch list. You know, watch list is just this little top button up here. And you can go through each of these individually and you can work out what they all do. They're all very handy. But this is just a very simple one to say stocks breaking their 20 day moving average. And then when you go to your drop down here, you'll see you know, stocks breaking 20 day moving average. Right. So I now need to add my moving average to here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little tool here. And this is the indicator and strategies um, tool. And you can see here that there's just a huge amount of scripts that you can add. You know, um, these are all community submitted scripts. These are all built-in, you know, built-in scripts within the TradingView platform itself. Um, the community uh, community picks are these ones here, top and trending. I hadn't actually seen. I didn't realize this functionality existed. So this is kind of interesting. So um, that's something that I hadn't seen before. So you've got editors picks, top and trending. Be quite fascinating to know how you get an editor's pick because um, I think that would make your sales go through the roof if that's the case. That is interesting. It's a pity I can't click on likes and sort it by likes though. But anyway, something I hadn't seen before, so that's always uh, fun. And I shall come back and I shall explore this a bit further later. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is go to built ins and I'm going to go to uh, moving average. All right, you can see how I've got a moving average. You can have exponential, you can have weighted, but you know, for this example, I'm just going to use a moving average. I'm going to close that. And you can see here it's added it up here. So this is now saying this is an MA9. Um, and see the little blue line here. So this is your moving average line, you know, and it's a it's a nine period moving average. And the period in this case is days because our chart is set to days. And so I'm after a 20 day moving average. So I want, to, I want the moving average of the last 20 days. And so all I do is I click on this little cog and I change it to 20. And while I'm in here, I'm just going to make it a little bit easy to see. So I like green, you know, I always think green is good. So I'm going to make it green and I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So it's easy to see. It's probably a bit too thick. So let's have it like this. So let's say it's going to now be, it's a 20 day moving average and it's green. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for stocks, see where it's just crossed over here. So it's sort of singling that, you know, momentum's come back into that stock. And you can see from there, it's gone quite well. And you can see here, it's crossed here, and it's gone quite well. It's crossed here, and it's gone quite well. So um, moving averages are always a lagging indicator. Um, so because it's an average, it's always going to be a little bit behind the move and a bit behind the price. 
But what you're trying to do is just a super, super simple little strategy to say, well, you know, it was in a good uptrend here. Um, the price crossed below the moving average and, you know, not, not just a little one-off cross, but, you know, it kept going down, so get out. But then when it crossed back above it, you know, it crossed over here, the price is going back up again, then it might be a good time to get back into it. So, you know, it's just, a again, one of the super simplest ways you can trade. Some people use, you know, a combination. They like to see a, a slow moving average cross over a fast moving average. You can actually have two moving averages um, and use that as your signal. But, you know, for this example, we'll just literally look at price. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm saying, well, this is quite good. But how do I find other stocks where this crossover has just happened, you know, that might be starting to turn bullish? You know, you can see this one did well, had a pullback, and it's gone bullish again. So, um, you know, with, with upward momentum. So, you know, again, it's going up, had a pullback, it's going up, had a pullback, it's going up. And so I'm trying to say, how do I find stocks that are just about to have an uptrend after they've had a pullback? So what I need to do now is I'm going to open up the stock screener, which is down the bottom left. So I click on my stock screener. And this is by far, I think, the most powerful tool within TradingView and probably the most underutilized. So for certain people where they might trade something like um, Bitcoin, where the only thing you trade is, um, you know, BTC and you just keep going in and out of that one, you know, one cryptocurrency, you don't really need to use the stock screener. But a thing that you could do is you can click on it and you can go down to the stock screener and you can do it exactly the same way across all these different cryptocurrencies. There's 12,000 cryptocurrencies. And so rather than just simply trading Bitcoin, you know, when it's bullish, you can literally trade, you know, 12,000, you know, individual stocks, depending on, you know, if you've, you know, if you can buy them through your exchange. So let's pretend you're on Binance, you just select Binance. Um, and then the only ones you need to worry about is, you know, roughly, you know, 1946 um, cryptocurrencies that you can trade through Binance. So anyway, so we're going to talk about stocks for this particular one. So I'll go back to stocks, stock screener. Uh, nope. And so I'm in the stock screener and I don't know what the default view is anymore. I've messed around so many times that if I go back to here, all right, so you can see this is probably what you've got. You know, this is probably what your setup looks like at the moment. And all I do is I tend to have my own uh, columns and headings. So I, I get rid of all these. So the easiest way to do that is I do want to know what the last price was. I want to know what the change percent was. The change, I don't really care about the, you know, what that is. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Um, technical rating is kind of cool. I'm going to drag that to the left just to see which ones, you know, it, it's a strong buy, strong sell. And all the technical ratings, if I click on it here and I scroll down over here, you can see the technical rating is just a whole collection of indicators that tell you, um, you know, from a, from a technical analysis point of view, is the stock likely, based on what all these indicators are doing, is it likely going up um, in terms of, you know, is it, a, is it a buy or is it likely going down in terms of being a sell? This is really just a rough guide, but it's just one of those things that might help you get, you know, the trade a bit more in your favour. Right, so I don't want any of those. I don't want a technical rating. I want last change volume. I want volume. I don't really want volume. I'm going to get rid of volume and I'll show you why. Um, volume and price, I'm going to get rid of. Market cap, I don't really care about. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm literally just right-clicking, going remove PE. Don't worry about PE. You might if you're a fundamental trader. Remove column. I'm not really interested in the number of employees. I'm not really that interested in the sector, but there is a good reason to be interested in sectors, but um, not for this video. You know, the very short version is if the sector is going up overall, then there's a very good chance that the stock within that sector will also go up if the overall sector is going up. Same way that if the market's going up, your share's more likely to go up. But, you know, if, if you're in a very strong sector, the market can be going down, but your sector might be going up. So I'm now down to, you know, simply these three columns here. And so I need to add some back in. So I'm going to click on these little three dots and I'm going to say, um, I want to have a moving average. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stocks breaking above the moving average. So I'm going to scroll down. So see, I've got my simple moving average. So I'm going to tick that. And now there should be a column. No, nope, didn't work. So uh, moving average. Sometimes you need to tick it. It doesn't quite take. So it didn't take, I don't think. Maybe it's a uh, simple moving average. Why don't you take? Right, so now he's, see he's ticked. And so if I come back up here, see I've now got the simple moving average 20. And so this is going to seem really dumb. But all I do now is I literally click on that. And I can say simple moving average below 
the last price. And so I've gone from 12,000 stocks down to 7,816. So all of these stocks now should be where the price, see how the close is above the simple moving average. So the price is above the simple moving average. Price is above the simple moving average. So that's great. So I've worked out how I can find all the stocks where the current price is currently above the simple moving average. But remember what we're trying to do is find that where it crosses over, where it actually turns bullish and starts to head up. So it's not a matter of is it already above it. I'm trying to find the earliest start of some of these runs. And so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say instead of saying below last, I'm going to click it again. And I'm going to say crossing down last. And so sometimes I get these mixed up. But so see, I'm down to 14, 16. So I've already got a lot less stock. So see how this one here, see how it's just crossed above it? This one here, so see how the price has just crossed above it? So it's a bit hard to see, but if I zoom in, you can see that's, and all I've done to zoom in is I hold down my control key and I can sort of zoom in and out. I can move this line here up and down. I can zoom in and out. And if you want to reset it, but see how here, that's where your moving average is and see how the price has just crossed above that moving average. If I want to reset it, I just double click. Um, and then I click on the one year if I want to, you know, sort of have a, a good look at how that stock looks overall. And so you can see now I've got 14, 16 stocks where the price has just crossed above that moving average. And so I sit here, I think 14, 16, that's still way too many. That's still a whole heap of stocks. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to add in the exchange. So I'm going to click exchange. And now I'm going to say, these are all the exchanges that I can trade within the US. And so I'm now going to say, well, the one I don't want is these OTCs, these sort of more penny stocks. See how these ones are all 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 0. So I could simply filter by last price and get rid of them all. But I'm going to say, show me the ones that are on the sort of bigger, you know, more heavily traded exchanges. And so now I'm down to 11.93. I'm going to say, don't show me any that are below, let's say, 10 cents. You know, that's just uh, below last price, below. Why is that going to that? 0.24. Why did you do that? What have I done wrong? Oh, show me the last price has got to be above 0.1. Right, so they didn't really change anything. The other thing I want to do is I want to find stocks that have decent volume. So I'm going to go volume. I'm going to say over, let's say, 90 days, so, you know, roughly three months. Um, I'm going to say only show me stocks where the average volume is greater than, say, a million. See what that does. So that gets me down to 274. So I've gone from 1,200 down to 274. So that's pretty good. Um, sometimes I might put in 500,000, I might put in 100,000, but 1 million is pretty good. Right. And so the other thing I want to do is instead of finding stocks like this that are kind of a long downturn, down run, I want to try and find stocks that are actually going up, you know, over the course of the last 12 months. Um, and perhaps they've had a little bit of a pullback. So you can see this one here, you know, he's in a long-term downtrend, even though he's crossed over here. Um, you can see where he's crossed over there in the past. He's still sort of going down. So to me, it's a bit risky. So I'd like to try and find stocks that are in more of an uptrend. And so the way that I do that is I simply click on the dots again and I go um, uh, change. And so let me see if I guess right. Pre-market change, that's so not change. So maybe it's... Um, let me do 12 month. No, let me do one year. No. Uh, let me do performance. Yep, so there we go. So it's only because I've used this system quite a lot and I haven't added, you know, obviously I haven't added these in for quite a while. Yearly performance. Um, but the easy way to find out is, you know, when I first started learning trading, it was all I did is I clicked on this and I just went through and I looked at all of them. I thought, well, that sounds interesting. You know, I'll add this one. That sounds interesting. I'll add that one. And you can see here, it's just you know, a crazy number of built-in columns that you can start to do all your filtering with. 
So I've now got my yearly performance. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say only show me stocks where the yearly performance is above 100%. I'm now down to 25. So this is interesting. So these are now stocks. I'm going to sort it by this yearly performance. These are now stocks where they've literally just had a 20-day moving average crossover, which is that sort of bullish signal that we're looking for. You can see it crossed over here and it went up. It crossed over here, but it went, uh, sorry, crossed over here and it went up. Um, what I'm looking for is the price going from underneath and crossing upwards, whereas this one here, the price went down. This one here, the price is underneath and it crossed upwards. This one here, it didn't cross. This one here, it didn't cross. It crossed here, but didn't continue. And it's crossed here. So this could be a good sign. So I'd like to see it where it's crossed for a couple of days just to confirm that direction. Last night was a particularly strong night on the um, the stock market. And you can see that you know this one went up. Uh, you can just see up here on the top left. But see, it went up 9.7% overnight. So you know, you know, during during the day's trade. So he had a really big upward movement, but I want to see a couple of those in a row just to make sure that, you know, there's a bit of a trend in there. So again, zoom out. So you can see crossed over here, you know, went from below above, had a really good run and below to above and it didn't run. See, it only sort of ran that one day and then it collapsed again. So here it's crossed above, but then it's collapsed again. So here it's crossed above. I want to see if it have a couple of more candles going up and then I might look at entering the trade. You can see over here, see how it's crossed above, but it didn't cross back below it at that point. Um, you know, again, you know, the, the moving average is still sort of finding its uh, finding its support and strength. So it could be worth a watch, but let's keep going, see if there's any that are a bit more consistent. So that one, again, it's just crossed over. It's had a couple of days. That's so got a little bit of momentum showing there, one of the car groups. You know, it's probably, again, had a really good day last night. It was up 7.5%. That's probably because of, you know, Tesla did so well. GSM. So, you know, GSM, again, sort of a longer-term downtrend. CPE. REI. That one's sort of in a longer-term downtrend. That one's sort of looking a bit okay. A bit of a funny stock. This one here is sort of a bit more, you know, that I like. You know, it's sort of nice and steady. A bit of a pullback. See how well that one goes over time. You know, there's 25 of these that I can look at. And so that one there's, you know, sort of, a, you know, you'd argue a bit of a longer term downtrend. That one's had a massive gap up. See, I don't like it when the stock sort of does this and jumps up because you're just not quite sure, you know, if it might come back down the other way. Um, you know, oil and gas, I know that, you know, oil's, oil price, I think, is doing particularly well. So, you know, that was up 9.5% last night. I wouldn't be surprised if this one has a little bit of a run. NVIDIA, I like. I've always liked NVIDIA. So, you know, this is a stock that I might be more tempted to, you know, play. And you can see I've done a little bit of charting around this one. But, you know, again, he went up 2.4%. He would have done a little bit further than that before pulling back. But, you know, that's not a bad one. Um, LAC. So again, a little bit early for him. I just want to see a couple of days in a row where they've, you know, had a bit of a run. So because I'm finding stocks where it's just happened, you're only going to see this one or two day candles. So in order for me to see how they're going over the next couple of days, what I need to do is I need to keep track of them. So in order to do that, I'm just going to highlight them all, go control all. And so I've highlighted them all. I'm going to go right click. I'm going to go add selected symbols to watch list. So I'm going to click on that and see how they're now all in my watch list up here. And so what I'm going to do now is over the next couple of days, I'm just going to keep an eye on them. And so what I'll do is I'll start to flick through these and I'll look for the ones where they've had another couple of days where they've had that sort of a run up um, and, you know, keep a good eye on them. And, you know, with this one here, you know, it's, it's had a couple of good days here. But, you know, it might be around a horizontal support or resistance level here, um, you know, and so it might all of a sudden collapse and, you know, go the other way. But so if I sort of, you know, put my little sort of support line across there, um, and so you can see that if he starts to move above that, then, you know, he might be something that I want to have a play at. If he drops down, I'll get ahead of him. Anyway, so that's hopefully a really simple way, you know, with 15 seconds of this video to go where you can find a list of stocks breaking above their 20-day moving average, put them into a watch list, 
and keep track of them over the next couple of days and, you know, look to invest in perhaps the ones doing better. Thanks for listening.